I don't think they're a strawberry generation because uh, the term itself really is a stereotype and I believe that each generation has its own share of people who buckle under pressure, has its own share of people who are spoiled. Uh, to a certain extent, I think we are. Um, why? Because uh, I find that my generation of people, we tend to um, complain a lot. Um, we try a little, we get out from our comfort zones for a short while, but the moment things don't go our way, we just give up. I don't think we're a strawberry generation. I think we're still young. We still need time to toughen up, find ourselves. Which generation at age 20 was completely perfect? I think we still need time to go out there, get the naivety knocked out of us, and find more about ourselves. Have you faced any bias in the workplace because of the perception that you're a strawberry generation? Do you face challenges working with older people? Well, hi, I'm Daniel Martin, and we're in the School of Film and Media Studies, Nian Polytechnic. Let's talk about how employers see Gen Y. I have with me on the panel Pauline Strawn, Associate Professor from the Department of Sociology at NUS, Adrian Tan, Managing Director, Recruit Plus Consulting Private Limited, and Bei Yam King, the father of three and MP for Tampanese GRC. Let's go straight into the idea of whether or not this perception can affect how employers see Gen Y. Contracts honestly has been shorter, uh, from two years to one year to nine months. Uh, I know of one employer who used to uh, expect the candidate to pay out of the contract if they were to break it. Right now, they would actually pay the candidate a sum of money if they were to stay on and complete that contract. So they are changing a lot of models, changing the way they can use to attract more young people to work for the organisation. Employers have to, have to react to a much tighter labour market now. So it has very little to do with the generation's performance or perception of their performance. They don't have a choice, right? They have to, they have to become more attractive in terms of what they can offer to attract talent and for retention. So I think with that in mind, this generation realises that there are a lot of opportunities for them. You sense the urgency when you speak to them. They want to succeed, they want to make sure that they're able to you know, earn their first million, for example, by the time they're in their 30s or, or maybe even late 20s. A lot but, of heads were nodding, by the way, when <laughs> you said that. Huh? But at the same time, they're also acutely aware that they're going to live longer. And that's why they're, they're willing to venture into you know, unconventional career options. And this is a generation that will create new terminologies in the workplace because of the innovative you know, nature of the, the thought process that they're engaged in. Absolutely. Let's hear what they have to say as well. In previous generations, they have this perception of us like not being able to do certain stuff, but then we are trying our best to prove our worth and like try to be different, try to be creative and just stand out from the rest. But then sometimes we don't get enough opportunities to actually express ourselves. Like some work, they only like expect you to do certain stuff. They don't let you go out of your comfort zone and share your ideas. We want to be known, but then they see like us as weak, you know, and we don't get to go out there because of how they see us. You have to accept that you need to gain experience and also need to respect people who have been in the industry for long, long enough, longer than you, they the seniors. Because I think in our society, we still want to advocate that you know, it is about respect for elders. They may not be as qualified as you, but they have experienced their networks, they have the exposure that you do not have. There's a marriage of both. The experience, the more older ones, as well as the younger, the, the fresher ones, that, that the industry or any industry will, will develop and become better. Gen X is really protective of us because they have gone through so much and they think that, you know, we're weak, we can't take it. So it's the label all over again. And they should really let us experience for ourselves all the disappointments, all the failures, and maybe then, Will we like? Will the label not be on us anymore? Uh, are we blaming parents here? <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing what's ironic is that Generation X expects that we are people who should not go through the same uh, toil that our grandparents are going through, so they try to protect us. But when they protect us and we become who we are today, they think that that's wrong. So that makes us as a generation very confused. So should we be protected or should we not be protected? And when we try to get out from our boundaries, what happens is that a lot of people. Um, we are not afraid of failure. We are afraid of people always putting us down. And this whole talk about how Generation X uh, uh, fuse Generation Y uh, is not good enough. But the truth of the matter is, why, why do they have to keep saying that? Why not support us? Why do they have to always find a reason to beat us down? Why do we say that, panel? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it could be Gen X don't understand. Like what business, like, did, what was YouTube? What, how can you make a living out of YouTube, for example? So I think that's where more communication can come in. 
explain to your parents, your, your elders, oh, this is how we, we, we make a living, this is how I create works, how I can you know, uh, market them, and, and what kind of value I'm creating for society, the industry, whatever. Because sometimes, if you don't know, you think, oh, yeah, you're doing something, you're bumping around. Therefore, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still need to feed you. I need to house you. I need to protect you. So, so that could be this, this, uh, uh, you know, a gap in, in perception and understanding. I started my business ten years ago against the wish of my mother. She, she's quite, she's quite old, and uh, her generation would are uh, the kind of generation where they expect their sons or their daughter to have proper education and then go to an office, just work and work and work, work. for and somebody. It. Work and for somebody, there. and that's it. If you look at the guy who created Starbucks. Uh, he went to 200 over different proposals to raise funds. Otherwise, we won't be drinking Starbucks today. So he was rejected 200 over times. Can you imagine that? I think I 100 times I think sun already. <laughs> so really persevere. And yes, there's a lot of avenue for you to pursue your dreams right now, especially in the faculty that you're in. I know someone who actually started YouTubing. He did a lot of videos and all that. My company actually engaged them to do an advertisement. Right now, they're doing extremely, extremely well. They're fully booked until June. You still have to put in hard work, doesn't mean there's new channel, you can just wire your way through. Hard work is still important and don't ever let anyone say you can't do it. You can if you put your mind and your heart to it. We're going to continue on this vein, this idea of how to cope in the workplace, how to do away with this stereotype of uh, the strawberry Y generation that this generation clearly does not want. And click on the next video as we continue Talking Point live on campus here at Neon Polytechnic School of Film and Media.